I'm Dr Sally Randalls and I'm a Senior Research Fellow at the Manchester Institute of Innovation Research at the University of Manchester. And I'd like to introduce you to the video part of the third session of this MOOC, Managing Responsibly. And this session is about responsibility and it will focus on corporate social responsibility. But I'd like you to watch this video also in line with the uh, lecture and the interviews and the assignments that we'll be doing all together because they will cross-reference each other. We would like to open this video of the, of the MOOC session three by thinking about this beautiful reading room. We're at the moment in the Manchester Central Library and this library was set up as part of the Public Libraries Act in 1850. Already the idea of how the state and government uh, creates acts which then facilitates action by different actors. And although we're going to be focusing on this session of the MOOC on corporate social responsibility, we're really interested in how lots of different actors come together because we see through history, and we'll give you a very short, a very snapshot view of that history in Manchester, we see how techn technological and economic change throws up new social issues and questions which actors then come together to try and resolve. And Karl Polanyi called this the societal double movement. It can happen over time or it can happen simultaneously, but it's the simple idea that as technological and economic change and markets progress, then the social and environmental issues that are thrown up become a topic through which actors come together to try and reform the situation and try and find some resolution to those issues. And now we're in the modern part of the Central Library of Manchester and this has been the result of a really amazing refurbishment that was only completed in 2014 and cost in fact £50 million and the library was closed for three and a half years. But now through this amazing public resource and the archives that are stored here and the visitor centre that is established here, we can take just a snapshot look at the history of Manchester, which shows us how the technological, economic and social change throws up new social issues and responsibilities that then actors come to, turn together around to, to identify, to debate and hopefully to resolve. And in fact, it was only about 10 minutes walk from where we're standing now that Karl Marx and Frederick Engels came to Manchester from Germany to study and research the conditions of the working poor. And it was from that research and that work that they wrote some of the most iconic political texts that we know of today, such as in 1845, they wrote the, working, the conditions of the working class in England and as we know, a lot of their thinking and ins was inspiring and led to new ideas of social and economic organisation, such as communism. So, we're here in this fabulous resource at the Manchester Library, where they've created this amazing archive of photographs and images of the history and current conditions in Manchester where you can actually see how that technological, economic and social change has evolved through these, through these images and through these graphics that we have here. So you can choose and identify and research any aspect that you're interested in. The history of education, the history of housing, of social and working conditions, um, of overcrowding, of uh, factory conditions, really anything that you're interested in, in terms of that snapshot of technological, economic and social change. We've now just come across the road from the Central Library to the Quaker Meeting House, the Friends Meeting House, here on Mount Street in Manchester, which was established in 1795 by the Quaker community according to their principles and values, which are integrity, equality, community, simplicity and peace. But what's really interesting about this meeting house 
and why we have a link with our um, topic of responsibility is because this is one of the places where different kinds of actors potentially come together to debate different kinds of social issues and their resolution. So what might have been debated here at the time we were talking about around about 1780 to 1850? Well, we have an archive picture of a meeting taken in 1842 in this very spot. And we can look at the archives to see what kinds of issues might have been debated around about that time. And two societies come to mind. They're very important to the history of Manchester because they play a crucial role in bringing actors together, in mediating those kinds of responses. And one is the Manchester Statistical Society. And that was established in 1833. And in 1834, the Manchester Statistical Society undertook the first ever social survey of housing conditions, going house to house in Manchester and interviewing over 4,000 working men and their families. And they were founded on the principles of trying to establish a knowledge base, they would say a base of facts, around which to look at and identify the very nature and characterisation of those social problems before um, creating a forum for debate so that those problems could be addressed. Now we can see in that picture in 1842 that there's a very particular format to that deliberation. Um, clearly it's not, uh, we have a, a line of, of, of men at the front and a lot of women in the audience. So it's perhaps not such an inclusive debate as we might wish to uh, look at in, in contemporary times, which we'll come to again later on about processes of deliberation and modern methods of deliberation. But my point is that here at these kinds of venues and in places like this within Manchester, again, each of them not very far from each other, you have places where actors come together, maybe the Chamber of Commerce, maybe businesses themselves, actors on behalf of civil society, actors on behalf of local government and politicians. So we can look at the kinds of issues that the Manchester Statistical Society covered in the 1830s, and we can see topics such as um, education reform. We can see topics such as uh, working conditions, and interestingly, a debate about meat consumption in Salford. So now we're going to think about modern Manchester, contemporary Manchester. And as far as the eye can see across this cityscape, you have a conurbation of 2.8 million people. But the point I'd like to put across now is that as the history of Manchester or really any of your cities uh, changes and evolves, it brings about new challenges of economic, social and technological change. And really how responsibility then adjusts and adapts to those changing economic, social and technological changes. And the point that I'd like to make is that as these new challenges emerge, they bring with them um, new issues for businesses, large and small, governments, higher education institutes and universities, and citizens as well, and non-government organisations and charities, all this mix of organisations, it brings with challenges for those organisations to think about the implications of these changing social, economic and technological conditions. So to give a few examples, Manchester has the third largest airport in the UK. That serves its 2.8 million people and helps to connect Manchester all around the world for business, tourism and social connectivity. But of course that brings with it complete important issues for aviation emissions in terms of climate change. Let's take another example. The manufacturing sector of Manchester has fundamentally changed. We've got a lot of restructuring, so manufacturing uses new techniques and those new techniques require uh, smaller and differently skilled workforces. The structure of Manchester's employment has moved towards um, finance and services. 
and the workforces of today look very different and it's very important in terms of responsibility that we think about those differences and we think about inclusion and diversity to make sure that the workforces of Greater Manchester and the businesses here reflect the cosmopolitan, diverse, ethnic and gender makeup of the population. That may be another issue for responsibility. And a complete new feature of Manchester's economy that we definitely didn't see in the 19th century, art, culture, tourism and sport makes up 16% of Greater Manchester's employment these days. And as you might well know, football is a very important part of uh, the Greater Manchester scene, both culturally and in sport and in terms of economy. £330 million per annum is the economic benefit to Manchester of its football economy. And that brings with it interesting things for how the big football um, teams you will know, I'm sure, of Manchester United and Manchester City, their own community programmes, their own responsibilities tend to focus on uh, sport, well-being, working with schools and working with local communities. So you see there how different kinds of foci for responsibility come out of that changing profile of economy and the organisations that are involved. Healthcare is a really important part of Manchester's economy these days. We have 12 hospitals, including the world-renowned Christie's Hospital for Cancer Prevention and Treatment, and a lot of research is attached to those hospitals. And yet, on the other side of the coin, health has got important implications as well. For example, 24% of the population of Greater Manchester is technically defined as obese. That's a new issue for our contemporary world. And we haven't lost the, the issues that were still around previously in the 19th century. In fact, 24% of our young people under the age of 16 are technically living in poverty. So although technologies and economies and sectors are changing all the time, sometimes new issues around health are emerging. And finally, we can think about the role that our universities play in Greater Manchester. We have no fewer than six universities in the Greater Manchester Conurbation and 20 Nobel Prize winners have come through the doors. As we saw, or we will see, as you will look at the interview that we've done with Professor Rainer Breitling on synthetic biology, and he's a professor of systems biology, whole new sectors are emerging around research and development. And you'll see in his interview, he discusses synthetic biology, and he discusses the issues and challenges that this new emerging technology, uh, as a platform technology, of which there'll be many, many different applications, which we can barely foresee at the moment, he discusses in his interview that is attached to this um, session, how those issues will we'll throw up new challenges as well as uh, potential new applications. So synthetic biology at the Manchester Institute of Biotechnology is one of the focal areas of our work here. And in those emerging technologies, we can think about how those different organisations, in some ways similar, but in many ways different, to how at the Friends Meeting House in the 19th century, people and organisations to come together to consider the implications of these new and emerging technologies. So that gives you a really rapid run through how Manchester has changed. And the reason why I've done that is when we think about how organisations adapt in different parts of the world to different place contexts and different technological contexts, this means that you in your own situations, your own context, can think about responsibility and corporate social responsibility as it applies to you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you at the lecture of this MOOC.